Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, was there anyone over the break who was exposed to any information about the case, sought information, had discussions, participated, or in an involuntarily overheard discussions? I see no hands. Thank you. Very good. We'll resume with the testimony from Detective uh, Deputy Leatherberry. I'll remind you, you're still under the oath that you swore this morning. If you would proceed, Attorney Raymond. Five is? Exhibit 205 is a photograph taken from the east side of the office level, if you will, facing towards uh, the west. It is the doorway that leads out into the garage area. Okay. And what is Exhibit 25? This is a photograph of the interior of the garage. The door that was in the previous photograph would be adjacent to the two refuse containers that are in the left uh, portion of that image. And are the vehicles that are in the garage, um, the Volvo belonging to Krista Halderson and the Subaru belonging to Bart Halderson? That is correct, yes. What is exhibit 207 a picture of? Exhibit 207 is a photograph that's depicting the Rubbermaid wheeled refuse uh, container. Um, and is that container um, consistent with the container found in the woods at the Earlwyn Drive property? This is the container that I referred to earlier in my testimony when we were uh, speaking to the lid that was in the uh, bathroom on the bedroom level that was under construction. Um, this is the lid with the refuse container, and it's consistent with the same type of refuse container that was found in the woods uh, out on Irwin property. And I'm, I'm sorry, part of your testimony might be a little confusing. Is this the same lid that was upstairs in the bathroom? No, it is not the same lid. This is uh, the lid that goes with this container. There are two lids, apparent, then there would be two lids within that side of the house. Exhibit 208, what is that a picture of? This is a photograph depicting um, the two refuse containers that uh, are provided by uh, a municipality for, for picking up of waste. Uh, one is a recycle bin with the blue lid, and the other one is the trash container. And did you test? Um, to perform any evidentiary test on any of these garbage cans? I did. On the handle of the uh, garbage can, uh, there was reddish-brown stain. Uh, there's also reddish-brown stains on the inside of the uh, container. The stain that was on the handle um, was tested with phenolphthalein, which was uh, presumptive positive, and then followed up with the uh, hexagon OBTI test, which was also positive for human blood. Could you describe exhibit 209 for the jury? This is a photograph of the interior side of the west wall of the garage. This would be in the southwest corner. In this image, there is a placard with the number seven uh, that is indicating that the, uh, the 
metal framed gray basket that is hanging and the items that are inside of that basket. And the seven was put there by police? Yes, I put that there. Okay. And Exhibit 210, what does 210 show? Exhibit 210 shows uh, another photograph of the same bin. However, the, uh, the first uh, container that was on top of it has been removed to expose a couple lengths of rope. You see a length of rope that is black in color and there's also a length of rope that is orange in color. And why did you note the rope? The black rope is consistent in appearance with a rope that was around the torso of the deceased that was located on the Erlin Road property. 211, again, just a close-up of that rope. It's showing the, uh, the cut end of that rope. And if you want to glove up. And Deputy, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 279. Uh, exhibit 279, does it have uh, a sticker from your department with a label? Yes, it does. It is a uh, evidence ID number 41887, and it's the black rope from the garage basket. I'd ask that you open up the bag. State will move Exhibit 279 into evidence. Any objections? It is received. It may be shown. And if you just want to hold that up, maybe stand up and hold it up for the jury. Exhibit 279. Was the, what appears like tape, was that present when you collected it? No, it was not. Is that something done by the crime lab? That was done by myself. Okay, why? It was done by myself in preparation for submitting the cut end to the state crime laboratory for comparison. And specifically, what is exhibit 280? Exhibit 280 is a cut section from 41887, the evidence ID number. And that is the portion of the rope that you cut and submitted, and it was submitted to the state crime lab? That is correct. At this point, I would move Exhibit 280 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Would you like me to? Actually, I don't think it's a cutting from the previous rope that was seen. And then just to move in for the record, Exhibit 281, how would you describe Exhibit 281? Exhibit 281 is an evidence bag sealed with evidence tape with evidence ID number 41993, which is the cut rope from evidence ID number 41692, which is the cut, uh, the rope portion that was around the torso. And I would move Exhibit 281 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Okay, Deputy, could you describe Exhibit 222 to the jury, please? 
This is a photograph, again, of the interior side of the west wall of the garage. The previous photograph would have been to the left of this on that same wall. In this photograph, we can see the, uh, the window, and below the window, uh, there are some, some green uh, stakes that are leading up against the lower left corner of that window. Two twenty-three. Can you describe Exhibit Two Twenty-three? In Exhibit Two Twenty-three, we can see those same green stakes as a reference from the previous photograph, and we can see a golf club that is against uh, the wall, and just to the left of the black head of the golf club, uh, there's a number indicator uh, for uh, an item evidence that was collected. 212, what does exhibit 212 display? 212 is a better photograph depicting the evidence marker number eight. Number eight is for the wooden handle that is attached to the ax head uh, that is on the floor of the garage. Please describe 213. 213 is a photograph of the acts that I collected from the garage. And just to back up, this axe was kind of hidden behind some boards? It was something that uh, you had to look to see. I, I wouldn't say it was, was hidden. It was, it was concealed uh, by its placement. Um, but if you had the right angle, you could, you could see it was there. So Exhibit 214, can you please describe it? Exhibit 214 is a photograph showing staining that is on the area of where the axe head and the handle of the axe come together. This red staining is consistent in appearance with that of blood. Uh, there's also some dark staining on the metal uh, portion of the axe head itself. Exhibit 215. It is a yet another photograph of the axe with the axe head. And again, we can see staining in the area of where the axe head and handle intersect. Exhibit 216. It is a same photograph of, I'm sorry, it is a photograph of the same axe, however, it is the opposite side of the axe head. Again, we can see that there's uh, some dark uh, discoloration uh, in the area where the uh, uh, sharp end of the ax would be, um, and there is not the same discoloration in the area of the, the blunt side of the, the ax head. 217. 217 is a photograph of the same ax, and here we're referencing the, the handle area and we can see on the handle that there is dark red, reddish brown staining. And 218. 218 is uh, another photograph of that same handle. It's just a, a more of an overview of the handle. And if you want to glove up, detective. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 219. What is Exhibit 219? Exhibit 219. <clears throat> exhibit 219 is the axe that I had collected from the garage. And there's various stickers. One of these stickers says biohazard. Why is that on there? There's a biohazard stick it on, sticker on there. Um, again, because of the reddish brown staining. Um, the reddish brown staining that is on the ax is human blood. I tested it with the phenolphthalein test, the presumptive positive. I then followed with the hexagon OBTI test 
to uh, determine if it's human blood or not. And the test came back positive for human blood. Deputy, would you please open up exhibit 219? And before you take it out, does Exhibit 219 appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it? It is, however, there's uh, a lot of uh, purple dye stain that is on there. Sure, from fingerprint testing. That would be consistent with the fingerprint At this point, And it was sent to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab for a plethora of tests. Yes, it was. I would move exhibit 219 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. All right. Deputy, could you please pick up exhibit 219 and, dis and maybe walk back and forth besides the jury and sh show them exhibit 219. If you would just put 219 back into the box. Exhibit 223. Could you describe Exhibit 223? Exhibit 223 is, again, a photograph in that same area where the axe was. Uh, it's depicting the uh, boards that are all standing on edge and leaning up against the interior side of the west wall of the garage. How would you describe Exhibit 224? Exhibit 224 is a uh, referred to as a bow saw or handle for a bow saw that is behind the uh, boards. This would have been just to the south of where the axe was um, or to the left in the previous photograph. And it's kind of behind some boards? Yes, it is. <clears throat> How would you describe exhibit 225? Exhibit 225 is the uh, one end of the bow saw. Um, when I say it's a bow saw, it would normally have a uh, saw blade attached. However, the saw blade um, on this particular bow saw is absent. However, there is a small fragment or a piece of a broken saw that is uh, attached to the end of the bow saw and that would be in the area where that silver round button looking uh, area is. Okay. If you want to put on some gloves. The big one. Deputy, I'm showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 226. From the stickers, uh, can you describe what 226 is? 
226 <coughs> is the broken blade section in the bow saw under evidence ID number 42202. Okay. Um, could you please open and visually examine 226, please? And does 226 appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as when you or a member of your team collected it? It does, however, um, the end of the uh, saw blade uh, is no longer attached to the end of it. it is, there a, is it in a separate container? Yes. Okay. And again, that was sent for fracture match at the Wisconsin State Crime Lab? Yes, it was. This time I would move exhibit 226 into evidence. No objection. It is received. And deputy, if you could display uh, at least the major part of that saw to the jury, or both parts, yeah, to the jury. Deputy, as you return Exhibit 226, do you see a brand name on it? I do. What is the brand name? It is Craftsman. Does it have any other markings or brand? Uh, it has uh, with the, uh, a number, and then it has the, uh, another number of 21IN bolt saw, uh, indicative of 21 inch bolt saw. And is there any marking or brand name on the blade part? <clears throat> okay. Judge, can we approach just briefly? Sure. You may continue. Okay. Uh, just want to repackage 226. I'm going to leave this for a further question later. Thank you, Deputy. I'll put it on the table in a minute. Exhibit 220. How would you describe Exhibit 220?
Exhibit 220 is a photograph of a uh, Craftsman rolling tool chest that is against the north wall of the garage on the interior side uh, nearest to the northwest corner. How would you describe Exhibit 221? This is a drawer that is in the lower section of the rolling uh, toolbox that I had opened and photographed. And exhibit, well, it's the same exhibit number. It just has the added circle, so 221. It appears to be zoomed in. Um, what would you describe there? This is a handle for a all-way um, handsaw with two saw blades um, that are linked together with uh, a metal wire of some sort. Okay. And in that circled area, can you read a brand name for that blade? I can, I can see the always saw, but I cannot see uh, the brand on the on the blade itself. I'm sorry, I meant the saw. The Allway was the brand name? That's what I see, yes. I'm gonna show you, Deputy, what's already been marked and received as Exhibit 140. This was a tool found at the Irwin Road property. Could you please open up 140? And can you look at that saw and tell me what brand that tool is? This is a hallway manufacturing company. So same brand at the farm, this tool, as the one in the Craftsman toolbox at the 4595 Oak Springs address. That is correct. Okay. Do you want to put 140 back? Thank you. Exhibit 13, moving on from the garage. What room is this? This is the family room that is on the lower level. This is the same level that the office is on. And the stairs that are depicted in the right side of the image ascend up to the main level um, or to the kitchen. Could you please describe Exhibit 14? Exhibit 14 is a overview of the uh, family room. Uh, there's the table with the chairs. There's a fan on the table. There's a lamp on the table. Uh, there's a neck brace on the table. And in, in the background, you can see the uh, stone fireplace. Exhibit 240. Exhibit. Um. Can I, let me just ask you a question about those items on the table. Were they there when you first entered the home or were those items that the police placed there? This is a photograph of how we found the table um, at the residence prior to any work being done. So the fan was there next to the fireplace? On the table, correct. Please explain Exhibit 228. Exhibit 228 is a photograph. Um, it's an overall photograph of the stone fireplace. Uh, we can see 
the uh, fireplace insert, if you will, um, that is in the middle. That's the black rectangular framing uh, that has double bifold glass doors on it. Uh, to the left, there's a storage area for uh, kindling type wood with a bin. Exhibit 229, what is exhibit 229? Exhibit 229 is uh, a pair of uh, work type gloves. And again, those were there when you arrived on scene. Correct. This is a photograph of how we found it. How would you describe exhibit, exhibit 230? Exhibit 230 is a photograph of the fireplace enclosure. Now, this fireplace is not a gas fireplace. This is a wood-burning fireplace. Um, there, is a, uh, bi there are bifold doors on the front. Um, we can see that there are three of the four panes of glass that are in place. The fourth pane of glass is absent. And if we look at the lower edge of the frame on the left side, we can see a portion of the glass that would normally be in that position. Please explain Exhibit 231. Exhibit 231 is a photograph of the same fireplace. And we can see again in the area where the glass should be, there are portions of glass still remaining. We can see that above that on the trim that uh, for the glass enclosure, um, that there's a, a silver uh, bare metal essentially um, where the, the paint has bubbled up and there is a disruption um, on that surface. I actually am going to go back a couple of slides. Um, in Exhibit 240 of the items on the table, is there also a measuring tape on that table? There is a measuring tape. It also appears to be some hand sanitizer. There's a hand sanitizer. Um, and I believe there is a target bag on the far right side. Maybe a bottle of Advil and uh, some sort of Star Wars uh, memorabilia. That is correct, yes. Okay. 232. Could you please describe Exhibit 232? Exhibit 232 is a photograph of the far right side or the south side of the glass enclosure. This is on the family room side or the non-fire side. Um, it's showing the glass and, and streaks that are on the glass. Do you have any thoughts as to what caused those streaks? Objection, speculation. I think you said foundation. Um, sustained, you can uh, lay foundation if you, sure. if you wish. Detector Leatherberry, um, have you been taught through your various trainings as a crime scene unit investigator, um, have you had some trainings pertaining to fire or arson? Yes, I have. I've attended the Dane County Arson Response Initiative training and received training in fire investigations. Additionally, have you had any um, training on crime, crime scene cleanup or how to process potential clean up scenarios as you process a scene that a suspect may have left behind? Yes, I have. Okay. Based on those training and your experience, do you have any ideas as to what caused the streaking? It appears that an object was dragged across that surface in an attempt to clean that surface. It, there appears to be a residue. It, is that a fair statement? Yes, this appears to be a smear is actually what it appears to be. Could you describe at all what that residue, um, was it dry, oily, something else? I really can't uh, get into that because I did not uh, do any further examinations of that. Okay, fair enough. Exhibit 236, could you please describe Exhibit 236? Exhibit 236 is the middle portion of the glass that remains intact. 
um, that would be uh, in the middle of the photograph. And in, we can see that there is uh, a cloudy substance or smearing on the glass surface itself. And in the background, we can see the metal grate um, that is on the base of the fireplace. Exhibit 233, what are we seeing here? This is a photograph, a close-up photograph of the lower left portion or the uh, north side of the fireplace enclosure. What we see here is portions of the tempered glass that still remain within the door. And Deputy, as you examined this fireplace, both around it and inside of it, did you find glass either on the outside of it or inside of it? There were some small pieces of glass on the interior side of the um, fireplace itself. And Exhibit 234, what is the jury seeing there? This is a photograph of the bifolding door of the, on the north end of the fireplace enclosure. What we can see here is that the frame is still intact. There's the absence of the one piece of glass that has been broken out and the one pane of glass is present. And this might just be the angle of the photo, but could the door still close? It almost looks like it's off track. Yes, the door still closed. Okay. 241, what is the jury seeing in 241? In 241, we are seeing the area above the glass doors that is part of the enclosure. And what we're seeing here is the paint. There's the discoloration to the paint and uh, there's actually bubbling that has occurred. Any educated guesses as to what caused the bubbling? Yes. Uh, high temperature causes the bubbling of the coating that is on that material. Could you please describe Exhibit 242? Exhibit 242 is a photograph of the same enclosure. Again, this is the far uh, left side if you're looking at it or the north and uh, this is above the area where the glass was broken out. What we see here is the different layers. We have the uh, layer of coating in the area of evidence marker letter L and then we can see some bubbling to the paint as we move further to the right in this image and as we continue we can see that it is actually burned away from the metal material itself and has exposed the raw metal. And that's what you see all the way on the right side? That is correct. Exhibit 235, what is the jury seeing? Exhibit 235 is a photograph with the doors open, allowing us to see into the fireplace firebox. We can see that there is a metal grate. There are two logs situated from left to right or north and south. There is some unburnt newsprint paper material. There is a chain and a cable on the right side of the image that is for the damper and below the fireplace grate is a uh, ash clean out door. And what is an ash clean out door? It's an area where the ash can be uh, depositive and, and swept into when cleaning the uh, fireplace out. Exhibit 237. Exhibit 237 is the photograph. It's a close-up photograph of the previous image that was depicted. What we can see in this image and drew my attention was the different discolorations on the grate itself. When we look at the grate, we can see that there are areas that are more gray or light in color. And then we see areas that are more dark um, or they have a wet appearance to them. Uh, 
when I had seen this, um, I knew that uh, there was something more burnt in this fireplace uh, other than just wood burning materials and newsprint. Um, and I elicited the help of the uh, ATF and the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigations Arson, arson Response Unit um, to assist. And did they in fact come to assist? Yes, they came out on two occasions. They came out to do an evaluation um, to determine if this is something that they uh, would be able to assist with. Uh, Agent Special Agent Boswell from the DCI is a certified fire investigator with the State Fire Marshal's Office, which is a division of the Criminal Investigations Unit, as is uh, William Fulton, he's with the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Alcohol Tobacco, and Firearms. Um, he is also a certified fire investigator. I am not a certified fire investigator, but I knew enough that I needed to call for some help and, and get some assistance from the subject matter experts. Exhibit 238, what are we seeing on Exhibit 238? Again, this is the same fireplace crate. As we look to the far right, we can see the end of the chain hanging down. That's the damper that controls the flue, if you will. Um, we can see the uh, fireplace grate, um, the dark staining, and the, uh, the wood log that's in there, the brown and white wood log that is situated in the uh, fireplace grate. Exhibit 239, what is the jury seeing? Exhibit 239 is a photograph, it's a close-up photograph of the two logs that are situated in the grate. And we also can see the unburnt newsprint. If we look in the center of the image, we see a dark colored object that is burnt wood that has been placed on top of the unburnt newsprint. And if we look closer to the black burnt charred wood, there is a white object on that piece of wood. That white object is later determined to be human bone. And that determination was made by um, the forensic anthropologist? Yes, Dr. Christina Figueroa Soto. Looking at the wood, the newspaper, the bone, um, did you guys look at the date at all on that newspaper? We did, and we photographed the dates of all of those. I cannot recall what those dates are. All right. Stay tuned. All right. Exhibit 310. What is the jury seeing here? Exhibit 310 is showing a photograph of the uh, same fireplace. However, this was done, um, uh, taken after uh, additional chemical processing had been done within the house, as we can depict the two evidence markers uh, on the fireplace hearth, letter O and letter B is what I believe. Now, Exhibit 243, this starts to have placards in it. Yes, it does. And obviously, your department placed them there. I placed them there. Okay. Tell us about Exhibit 243. Exhibit 243 is a photograph depicting evidence markers with uh, alpha markers next to them. These are depicting individual stains of blood that I located on the dark tar-like floor. You can also see that there is a uh, marker on the hearth, letter B, uh, that is also from a reddish-brown stain that tested positive for blood. Exhibit 244, please des describe. Again, this is evidence marker letter B. This is on the fireplace hearth. It is on the grout. It's within the grout that is between the uh, two large 
hearthstones, and it's indicating a reddish brown stain. Exhibit 312. Exhibit 312 is a photograph of the same hearth. Letter B is referenced in the previous image. If we look in this image, we see that the letter N, which is on the floor, and the letter O is placed on the hearth. Those are markers were placed there after uh, chemical testing was done. Exhibit 311. Exhibit 311, again, is the same fireplace hearth. We can see the evidence markers F, E, D, C, I, N on the floor and the letter O and the letter B on the fireplace hearth. Exhibit 245. Exhibit 245 is a close-up photograph of the reddish brown stain next to evidence marker letter B. It is directly below the line in the middle um, that is the one centimeter line. And I see pointed out on these, on your placards, it also says which room. So this one says family. That is correct. I believe we saw one earlier that was B, but it said laundry. That is correct. So you use the same letters, but you indicate which room. We had to because of the number of items of evidence. Um, we, we would have gotten into um, double lettering and uh, for ease of, of identifica identification, we decided to label them uh, with the numerical marker or the alpha marker for whichever room that we were in. What does Exhibit 246 show? Exhibit 246 again shows the same as the previous. It's a uh, medium shot of the uh, stains that were on the floor. I'm not going to have you open these, so up to you if you want to glove up or not. Deputy, I'm showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 249. Is your office's identification sticker also on Exhibit 249? It is. It is. And what is Exhibit 249? Exhibit 249 is uh, seven swabs that I collected from the floor of the family room, um, letters B through H. And how did you take these swabs? The swabs were collected individually. So a swab is basically a cotton Q-tip uh, with an applicator on one end. Uh, it has a wooden shaft. Um, they're approximately six inches long. We apply a single drop of sterile water to the tip of the swab, and with the tip of the swab, we place it into whatever material we're attempting to collect onto the tip of that swab. Once we collect that swab, it is then placed into a slide box. Now, a slide box is consistent with that, like a matchbox. Um, it's placed into the slide box and uh, then it is sealed up. And does it exhibit uh, 249 also have uh, a sticker from the crime lab? Yes, it does. It has the M21, which indicates the Madison lab for the year of 2021, and the case number is 1575. At this time, I would move exhibit 249 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Deputy, I'll have you look at Exhibit 250. Please describe Exhibit 250. Exhibit 250 um, are individual swabs of the stains next to evidence marker letter N and evidence marker letter O. These stains were um, identified when the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory uh, responded with their field response unit to utilize luminol. 
Now, luminol is a chemical that we utilize to spray, uh, is a liquid form that we spray onto hard surfaces. And what we're looking for is blood stains that are, uh, appear to have been cleaned up um, or stains that have been cleaned up but are not visible to the naked eye. Just because a blood stain is wiped from a surface, it doesn't mean it's gone. Uh, there could be trace amounts still on that surface and they will be represented as uh, a uh, fluorescent blue colored uh, uh, glow when uh, you apply the luminol. Luminol is done in the hours of darkness or when we can make the room completely dark and it will fluoresce when it reacts with the blood. Um, these two stains are stains that reacted with the blood but were not seen by me when I uh, was doing my examination and found all the other stains. And specifically, was it Nick Stalky from the Wisconsin State Crime Lab who did the luminol? Yes, Nick Stalky and his team um, with John Ertle as an assistant and the two photographers assisted with uh, the process. At this time, I would move Exhibit 250 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Deputy, you're not going to be approached with a blow up of a photograph. It is five, five, six, exhibit 556. Five, Could you please identify exhibit 556? Again, this is a photograph that I had taken of the uh, fireplace. This shows the fireplace hearth with the alpha number uh, letters, I'm sorry, of O and B on the hearth. And then it shows the additional letters that are on the floor. Um, does it appear to be a true and accurate depiction of what you observed? Yes, it is. At this time, I would move exhibit 556 into evidence. Any objection? No objection. It is received. <coughs> it may be published. Bill, do you just want to maybe walk it in front of the jury so folks over on this side can see? Okay. All right, now back to your little screen. Exhibit 251. How would you describe Exhibit 251? Exhibit 251 is a photograph of an open freezer that was located in the basement. Now, this freezer is against uh, the west wall of the basement, if you will, and it is adjacent to the stairs that descend from the office area. And this basement, how would you describe the basement in general? Is it one big room, kind of two little rooms, something else? As you descend down the stairs and you're facing to the east, uh, there's a natural, there's a wall, a, a, a uh, center block wall that runs down the middle of the basement from east to west. Uh, it uh, separates the north side of the basement and the south side of the basement. There's wood framing uh, that extends from the west end of the wall that uh, continues uh, to the west. The cinder block wall at the east end intersects with the foundation of the basement itself. Exhibit 252. Exhibit 252. Shows uh, the same 
freezer, then we can see that it is uh, open. To the left of the freezer is a uh, upright freezer. We can see the gray door with the silver handle. Beyond the freezer, there is a rolling baker's rack type shelving that has, uh, for the lack of better terms, the uh, uh, COVID supplies. There's all kinds of uh, supplies on, on that uh, rack that has been stocked up. And to the right of the image, we can see the cement stairs that ascend up to the um, office level and family room level. Exhibit 253, what is it appears in Exhibit 253? Exhibit 253, we can see inside of the freezer itself. We can see that there is nothing inside of the, ref uh, the freezer. Uh, we can see that there's indentations in the base of the freezer. Um, we can see in the lower portion of the uh, um, freezer uh, that is nearest to the photographer, which was myself, um, a, uh, a raised white portion uh, for a drain. And why did you become, obviously you took several pictures of this freezer. Why did you do that? Uh, quite frankly, it was, it was out of place. Um, it's, it's up against the uh, area where the supplies were, so it was in the way. Um, it also was standing open, uh, which I didn't think was normal. Uh, when I discovered this, um, I was not made aware of this. Um, again, we talked about briefing and talking with detectives and information that I had received was that detectives and patrol deputies had previously been to the residence for when Chandler reported his parents missing. And during that time, they were in the house. And I couldn't think for a good reason why somebody would forget to tell me about a freezer that was in the basement. Uh, so I placed a phone call to Detective Sims and asked about the freezer, um, of why that freezer was in the basement and uh, it was not, she told me it was not there when, when they were there uh, on their walkthrough. Um, so again, that drew more attention. We have a freezer that just is out of place, um, the lid is open, and it was not in that same location when the detectives and deputies were there when the missing persons report was filed. Obviously it appears empty in this picture. Was there any food in it that you had to remove? No, this is the condition that it was in. Um, I also noted that uh, it was very, very clean. Um, I also observed that there was a, uh, a drain which we cannot see in this particular image, but looking down inside, it would be the lower left corner of this image, um, and it appeared to have a, a liquid-like substance in it. Exhibit 254, can you see that drain in Exhibit 254? Yes, this is a better representation of what I just described. The gray uh, drain um, for the freezer is located in the lower left portion of this freezer. And we can see that there is not a plug in place on the interior side and neither was there a plug in place on the exterior. What if anything did you do concerning that drain? I took a swab of the drain and tested it with phenolphthalein and I received a presumptive positive with uh, phenolphthalein for the presence of blood. I then followed it with the hexagon OBTI test. The hexagon OBTI test, as I explained earlier, is for the presence of human blood, and it indicated that for the presence of human blood that there was human blood present. So for example, just to try to explain it, if you had steak that was bloody and went into that drain, that wouldn't result in a positive with your second test? 
It absolutely would not. Human blood is what tests positive. Correct. Deputy, I'm approaching you with exhibit 374. Can you look at exhibit 374? How would you describe it? Uh, this is a swab of the blood from the freezer drain that I had taken. And this also has been uh, submitted to the state crime laboratory for analysis. Also has the biohazard sticker? Yes, it does. I would move exhibit 374 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. All right. Exhibit 255. How would you describe exhibit 255? Again, exhibit 255 is again showing that same freezer. Now we have the reference of the stairs to the right side that ascend up to the office slash family room level. Uh, we can see the freezer, uh, the chest type freezer that is open, as well as the uh, upright freezer and the uh, north center block wall of the basement foundation. One more question about that chest freezer. Was it plugged in? No, it was not. How about the upright freezer? Was it plugged in? Yes, the upright freezer was plugged in. And uh, when I had opened it, the contents with inside of that freezer uh, were cold. And those contents were food? There were all, all kinds of food in there, yes. Okay. Exhibit 256, how would you describe Exhibit 256? Exhibit 256 is a uh, photograph of one of the shelves that was behind the freezer, which would have been essentially between the freezer and the west wall of the basement on the south half, if you will. In this photograph, we can see that there's a couple bottles of Tide, a couple bottles of Dawn, um, there is a, a brown bottle with a uh, white cap, and uh, I noted that the, the seal was broken on that cap. So what did you do? I picked it up to determine what it was after photographing it, and it is an uh, empty bottle of hydrogen peroxide. And I am going to have you open this one, so I don't know if you want to go off and mask up or not. But Could you please uh, look at the stickers on Exhibit 282 when you have a moment? And what do you believe Exhibit 282 is? Exhibit 282 is the bottle of hydrogen peroxide that I collected uh, from the basement. It was on the uh, cell side. It was on the shelf that was previously uh, in the photograph. Could you please open and visually inspect Exhibit 282? And is that the bottle of peroxide you collected? Yes, it is. At this point, I would move Exhibit 282 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Now, why in the world did you collect a bottle of common peroxide? Well, there's a couple reasons why I collected the bottle of uh, hydrogen peroxide. Um, number one is it was out of place. Uh, we, we have a storage shelf that has stored supplies um, and they're in, in great quantities. Um, but there's a empty bottle of hydrogen peroxide that just did not fit. In addition, 
my experience in working with the uh, Dane County Medical Examiner's Office, um, I attend autopsies. And one of the products that they utilize to uh, neutralize and clean up blood if they were to get it on some paperwork is hydrogen peroxide. Does hydrogen peroxide have any smell? Not that I'm aware of, no. Unlike cleaners such as bleach? It definitely does not smell like bleach. Exhibit 257, what do you observe there? Exhibit 257 is a bottle of hand cleaner, um, the distilled water, um, and then it appears to be a, uh, a void area. What is Exhibit 258? This is a photograph of the south wall of the basement on the south side. This is the uh, foundation wall. And there are uh, a series of stored shelves on uh, the north side of that wall. They are the, uh, the black uh, shelving units. And we can see that they're neatly organized with uh, translucent totes and boxes. Exhibit 259. What is that display? Exhibit 259 displays a yellow roll of duct tape that I observed that was uh, on the shelf on top of one of the translucent, translucent bins as we see in this photograph. Exhibit 260. This is a close-up photograph that I took of the yellow duct tape uh, we can see here that uh, the cut end of the duct tape is visible. And again, 261? Is another photograph of the cut end of the uh, duct tape. When you're taking all these pictures of the yellow duct tape, were you aware of a garbage bin that was collected for evidence at the Irwin Road property? Oh, yes, I was. Were you aware of the fact that some yellow duct tape was found in that garbage bin? I saw the yellow duct tape inside that, that bin, and this yellow duct tape, again, it jumped out at me because um, it was consistent in appearance and color, um, and I definitely knew that this was an important piece of evidence that needed to be collected. So did you collect it? Yes. I'm going to show you, Deputy, what has been marked as Exhibit 283. How would you describe Exhibit 283? Exhibit 283 is the yellow roll of duct tape that was collected by myself. Okay. Um, it also has crime laboratory markings for the Wisconsin State Crime Lab, um, item H and H1. Uh, what is different about the tape at this point is that uh, the tag end of the tape has been pulled off of the roll and appears to have been affixed to a clear piece of acetate. Now this would be consistent with something that we would, uh, that would be done at the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory when we asked them to do a fracture match. Again, we submit this to the subject matter experts who are trained uh, in making comparisons and they can take the uh, unknown sample from the garbage bin, if you will, and attempt to fracture match it back to a known standard and that being this roll of tape that was at the scene. To put it crudely, they can tell you whether or not it's like two puzzle pieces, whether they fit together or not. That is a very good uh, explanation of it, yes. I would move Exhibit 283 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. What 
What is Exhibit 262 display? Exhibit 262 is a photograph in the basement. This is a photograph, I believe, of the uh, north wall of the basement. What we see in this photograph is uh, a window that is actually, you can't see the window, it's covered with the uh, towels that have been hung uh, to prevent uh, light coming into the basement. And did police hang these up when they luminaled or were these already there when you arrived? No, we did not. Those, these were already there when we arrived. This is a photograph of how it was when, when we uh, initially uh, saw the scene. And exhibit 263. This is again a photograph of the window covering. In this photograph, we can see that a uh, blue uh, clamp has been used to uh, cover uh, the window and attach basically the the uh, the blanket to the uh, um, the floor joist roof, uh, ceiling supports. Two six four. Could you please describe this image? Uh, Two six four. We can see the um, west wall of the basement. Now it's hard to see, but at the very left side, you can see a yellow stripe just to the left of that. That would be where the stairs are that ascend up to the officer, the uh, um, family room level. Um, what we see here is the cinder block wall. Uh, there's a wood bench uh, that is blue in color. There's a uh, butcher block style uh, work bench top that is in the foreground. To the left of that, we can see a floor safe. We can see a uh, gray tote bin on top of that. And the floor safe, just to make sure the jury is focused on the, it is on the lower left-hand corner. Correct, it is the gray, um, safe and you can see the evidence marker letter C is on that safe. Exhibit 268, how would you describe exhibit 268? Exhibit 268 is a photograph, uh, medium shot of the uh, left side of the workbench. In the far left, we can see the stairs that ascend up to the basement level. We can see there are evidence placards, letter A, B, C, the letter G, and the letter F. Exhibit 269, please describe that for the jury. Exhibit 269 is uh, the floor safe with the evidence marker, letter C, on it. We can see above the letter C and to the right, that there are uh, round circles. Those round circles are blood stains. Uh, they were observed as reddish brown stains uh, by Deputy Jim Plenty and myself. Uh, Deputy Jim Plenty and I uh, determined that uh, we would collect the stains individually. Um, I sampled a portion of uh, the stain that is above the letter C and tested that with phenolphthalein and it confirmed that it was present for blood. I again followed with the second and subsequent test, the hexagon OBTI test. That hexagon OBTI test was positive for the presence of human blood. The remainder of the stains on that were not tested, they were simply collected. And why is that? Because they're in the same general area. Again, we talked about um, the most probative value in submitting items to the state crime laboratory because of, of the limitations that we have in submitting items. Um, this is a, a, a screening process that we utilize so we can uh, submit the evidence with the best value. And uh, knowing that there was blood on that surface um, and it was human blood, we did not need to continue 
uh, testing additional stains. We're confident that additional stains could be sent out and tested by the crime lab. Do you ever, because of the size of a, st a stain or sample, have to make choices as to which test you do or what you do with the sample? Absolutely. We can never consume a sample. That means when I do a test with phenolphthalein, I cannot utilize the entire sample because I'm only testing to determine if it's blood. If I utilize that entire sample, there is nothing left to send to the lab. I then have to make that same determination if there's enough sample left to be able to do the hexagon OBTI test. And doing the hexagon OBTI test, it simply tells me if it's human or non-human. It does not tell me whose blood it is. Again, I cannot consume that entire sample. There has to be sample remaining to be able to be sent to the crime lab. Deputy, I'm gonna show you what has been marked as exhibit 373. Can you please review the labels of Exhibit 373 and tell us what it is? These are the uh, seven swabs that I collected from the face of uh, the safe that was in the photographs previously. Uh, they listed as swabs NS, so meaning north side of the basement, and they're swabs C1 through 7. And is there also a sticker on that uh, ex on Exhibit 373 from the Wisconsin State Crime Lab? Yes, this item was submitted to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab under case number M211575, and the item number or letter designation is Y, as in Young. There are additional stickers that are applied by the crime lab, and they appear to be Y1 through Y7. At this time, I would move Exhibit 373 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Okay. Moving on, can you please describe Exhibit 270? Exhibit 270 is a photograph taken in the basement. Again, we're on the north side of the basement. This would be in the northwest corner of the basement. Uh, we can see a refrigerator to the right. There is a bicycle in the background. There are alpha markers, the letter D and letter E that are on the floor. And what D and E, what, what are those denoting? believe letter E is a bullet fragment. Showing you exhibit 272. What is exhibit 272 show? Exhibit 272, we can see a gray piece of metal that has staining on it. And when we uh, look at this, we can see that uh, there's no uniformity to it. It is consistent with um, a projectile. Projectile, is that a fancy word for bullet? Uh, but that is the portion of the bullet. The bullet is made up of the casing, uh, powder, a primer, and then the projectile itself that is propelled from the firearm. So this is a bullet from a firearm. Down towards the bottom right, is there anything, an yes, additional it's, metal Yes, it's on fragment? the edge of the screen. Um, there's an additional small fragment. So there was two metal fragments. That is correct. Deputy, I'm now going to show you exhibits 285 and 286. I'm actually probably going to have you open these up. So um, just while you're gloving up, what, are the, what does the label of Exhibit 285 seem to be per your office's label? 
the Exhibit 285 is a metal fragment from the basement floor that was next to evidence marker letter E. It is under evidence ID number 41873. This also was submitted to the Wisconsin State Laboratory, uh, Crime Laboratory. Um, it has their case number with the evidence uh, sub-designator that they utilize of L and L2. All right, and I'll have you, and it also has a biohazard sticker. Yes, it does. Okay ask you to open up Exhibit 285. This time I'd move exhibit 285 into evidence. No objection. It is received. Could you walk it slowly in front of the jury, please, so they can observe it? Exhibit 285. Place it back in the box. I'll give you a chance to change your gloves and all. And what is Exhibit 286 according to the label from your department? Exhibit 286 is the metal fragment from the basement floor that was found near evidence marker letter E. It is affixed with evidence ID number 41874. And does it also have Wisconsin State Crime Lab stickers? Yes, it does. It has the state crime lab case number, as well as a sub-designator letter M as in Mary. I'd ask that you open it up at this time, and I would move exhibit 286 into evidence. No objection. It is received, and it may be published. And it appears to be in what I would describe as a small test tube. Is that fair, or what would you call it? It's like a small plastic cup. Okay. Could you please walk that by the jury? And Deputy, as you package that up, when you discovered 285 and 286, did you know that they were part of a projectile or bullet? The, at that point, I did not know they were. They were consistent in appearance with that of a projectile. Uh, but again, you submit them to the state crime laboratory. 
to their subject matter experts for further evaluation. Exhibit 273, what are we observing? I'm sorry, you said 273? Yes, I believe that's okay. the... Exhibit, exhibit 273 is a photograph that was taken of the workbench. And in this photograph, we can see uh, on the bottom left portion, a portion of that floor safe and that tote bin that we previously saw in the overall image that when we were looking to the west, we can see a uh, blue bench and a uh, on the shelf of the bench, there is a uh, spent fire extinguisher. Judge, this might be a good time to take a break. The next couple of slides are gonna involve a lot of exhibits. I see no reason to disagree. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take 10 minutes at this point in time. Randy. All right.